There are some players in the gaming community that love being the backbone of their team, the ones who revive, heal and amplify everyone's abilities and damage. This video fellas is dedicated to you, the support players who always try to save their reckless friends doing dumb shit in video games. I admit I haven't shown much love for the support builds in the past because personally I wasn't enjoying that role, but I was wrong. Being a support is exciting and incredibly fun, all you need is a broken build. And by now, hopefully everyone in the Remnant 2 community knows that if you need a powerful build, you embrace the chaos and you come by my channel. Now I might not be the best player in Remnant 2, but I know damn well how to make the game easier with super powerful builds and setups. And guys, this time I might have gone a little overboard. With this build, even a trio playing Apocalypse difficulty, the hardest setting in Remnant 2 by the way, will find a breeze. Guys, I'm not overselling it or exa exa exaggerate god damn it dude <laughs> exaggerating okay i got it nice you'll see for yourself how strong this build is and how effortlessly you and your teammates can play with it Pause. i hope you appreciate the difficult words i'm using in this video all right now let's dive into a quick build breakdown so you can understand how this build actually works Oi, and before I forget, Remnant 2 latest DLC, The Horizon, is just around the corner guys, and we will be showcasing it live on day 1. I know some of you guys prefer to watch videos over live streams, so don't worry, I'll be releasing plenty of videos and doing several live streams, and of course you are more than welcome to drop by and say hi, I'd love to see you there. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can stay notified in case you miss the news. Now let's get into the build breakdown. Fellas, for the shield house to work, we're gonna need a few things. One of them is 80% cooldown. And the way we achieve that is, of course, with Expertise, Legacy Protocol, Burden of the Rebel, and Burden of the Stargazer, which is a very important ring in this build because every time we are activating an ability, we lose HP. And that HP getting replenished gives us mod power back because of the dense silicon ring. And on top of that, every time we heal our allies, we also regenerate mod power. Since we are tanky enough and to complement our build, we are going to use the catalogers jewel because in this build, mod regen is important. And the reason why is because after you end up having no cooldowns on your skills, you will use the Song of Aether, which costs a thousand mod power and by using spell weaver you will get a big chunk of your skills back so mod power regen is very important in this build and then to further complement the damage of our teammates we are going to use the death brand which will enhance the incoming damage to the enemies by 10 percent and on that we are using feedback so every time we use our mod we're gonna regen a little bit of mod power to the coach gun or whatever long gun you prefer to further increase the mod regen for the song of effort to use it again and get our skills back and do the rotation over and over shielded heart might be an overkill here by using shielded heart and the medic shield you will get times two hp and almost triple your effective health that is over the top we are not using relics in this build because we have so much healing and shielding that we don't even need it. I recommend you to keep the relics untouched so you can have at least 10 revives for your teammates. At this point, fellas, a lifeless heart is not a bad choice. I don't know if the interaction works as intended, but you do have 20 relics. Thus, meaning you have 20 revives. I almost forgot, on the relic we are using minus 10% skill cooldown to complete the minus 80% cooldown reduction, plus 20% healing effectiveness and plus 15% health. You can replace the healing effectiveness with something like skill duration here if you like, but the healing is very nice, so I kept it this way. And now for the trace, of course expertise as mentioned, flashcaster to use the skills as soon as possible and deploy the shields on the teammates and the heal of course fortify and vigor to be as tanky as possible and to complement our tankiness we are going to use bark skin after that we are using spirit to maximize our mod regen strong back so we can have a medium dodge with this setup and last but not least we are using the revivalist to revive our teammates as fast as possible since we are the angel of the fire team and that's all for the build breakdown guys i hope you understand how it works it's pretty easy and very branded to use 
it's so fun it's actually very very powerful most of the support tank players out there are utilizing resonating heart with a medic prime perk although it is a powerful build it doesn't double the effective health of your allies yes it heals them all the time yes you can revive them yes you are tanky but if you meet a boss with empathy you are done for it you don't have any answer for empathy with this build and with the other you don't care if the enemy has empathy you don't care if the enemy has spiteful you are so tanky you you double your effective health with the shields and if your allies actually use shielded heart as well they will have triple effective health so it will be basically impossible for them to die enough with the build breakdown now let's enjoy the clips of me and my moderators destroying trio apocalypse have fun fellas i hope you enjoy this was a blast to make and there are more to come i can do holy shit i can do a video a lane with a 10 Holy hell! Okay, let's focus. Elaine with a 10. Can I tank that? Shit! <laughs> Damage reduction. Hell yeah, dude. Face tanking. Elaine with a 10 gifted membership. Who's new? Peter. Tumiko. Pedro. Danu! More damage! Dude, we are slaying, you know? We are slaying, you know? Holy hell, dude! That's crazy, dude. I can make a video for this. I can definitely make a video for this. This incredible support gameplay, man. But he wants to tank it. He wants to tank it. I can see that. Ooh, he cannot tank it. Now we know. Don't worry, support is here. Never mind. I got you, I got you. I got you, don't worry. Quick pass re revive. Alright. Holy hell. Got it, got it. We Josh died. That is the supreme support gameplay. Hey, don't die now. You're the support. No, he died though. I had to shield him. Unlucky, dude. Unlucky. I had to shield you there, man. My bad. My bad. Hell yeah, though. <laughs> I had to shield him. So, my mistake there was that I did not shield his body, right, from the swing. So even if they are dead, you still have to shield again and again, right? Let me see how much more power I get. Let me see how much I'm regening my mod so. Look at the mod regen. They have a shield all the time. They have a shield and have a healing all the time. And I'm debuffing the enemy as well. Now I give them 10% more damage, more shields. 
we do have a way to regen our mods now from the healing. So as soon as, they, as I see that they have broken shields, I just replace them. And now I get more skills back. This works, baby. This works, dude. Hell yeah, buddy. Oh, he died. I will die. Let me see, let me see. Shield the body. Shield the body again. I saved him. <laughs> Let's freaking go, dude. I shielded him twice, so he did not die because of that. Yo! That is actually very good, man. Yeah, dude. All right. Now we're talking. I did. I I use song of behavior for more damage reduction there for us. Damage boost. Damage reduction very soon. What? Okay, the boy died. I'm just spamming, you know? This is incredible. I was calling to say I 